Welcome back, first graders. Today we are going to read a story called The Girl with the Red Slippers. We are going to identify characters, setting, and events in a fairy tale. We will identify similarities and differences in two fairy tales. We will demonstrate an understanding of the word cautiously. We'll illustrate and describe an event from a fairy tale. And we will identify whether an event happened in the beginning, middle, or end. Our key vocabulary are cautiously, preferred, revived, and scoured. Cautiously is an adverb, and it means carefully or staying away from danger or risk. Miguel cautiously carried a bucket of water so he wouldn't spill it. Preferred is a verb. Preferred means liked something better than something else. Okay, Kara preferred to walk to school rather than take the bus. She loved being out in the fresh air and sunshine every morning. If you look at the picture, I circled the strawberry ice cream cone because strawberry is my favorite. I prefer strawberry over chocolate and vanilla. Revived is also a verb. Revived means refreshed, okay? Ahmed felt revived when he drank a big glass of water after playing in the hot sun. So if you've ever been outside for a long time, maybe playing soccer or some other game, um, and you're really hot and you go inside and you have a nice glass of cold water and you feel, ah, that is you feeling revived, okay? Scoured, also a verb, and scoured means searched very carefully. We scoured our house for the missing earring, lifting up rugs and going through drawers looking for it. Okay, guys, let's do a little bit of review. People all over the world love listening to and telling stories. Some of the stories told around the world are quite similar to each other, even though the stories originated in different places. Although the variations come from different countries or lands, the characters have similar adventures and face similar conflicts. In a story, what's a conflict? A problem, right? It's normally the problem that generally the main character faces. What was the name of the fairy tale you listened to yesterday? Cinderella. And which country did the story of Cinderella originate from? France, right? The country of France that is in the continent of Europe. Who are the main characters in Cinderella? Cinderella, the stepmother, the two stepsisters, the fairy godmother, and the prince, right? What was the setting of Cinderella? Remember, the setting of a story is where and when a story takes place. It was Cinderella's home and the royal palace, right? And when did the story take place? A long time ago, right? So what happened to Cinderella at the end of, this, of the fairy tale? She married the prince, right? Is Cinderella a nonfiction story, meaning true, or was it fiction? And how do you know? It was fiction, and we know that because fiction stories have parts that can't really happen in real life, right? And we know that you can't turn animals into other animals or into people, right? How was Cinderella treated? She wasn't treated very kindly, was she? Today you're going to hear a story that originated in another country, but whose main character faces a conflict or problem that is similar to Cinderella's conflict. Where are we? Today's read aloud originated in a country called Egypt many, many years ago. This is the continent of Africa. Okay, this part right here is Africa. That is the continent. And this in red is the country Egypt. All right, so Egypt is the country in the continent of Africa. And we are over here on North America in North Carolina. 
Okay, so if we went across the Atlantic Ocean, we could get to Egypt. Our, okay, remember our key vocabulary, cautiously, preferred, revived, scoured. Listen carefully to the girl with the red slippers to see how today's story is similar to and different from Cinderella. A long time ago in ancient Egypt, there lived a beautiful young girl called Rhodopis. Rhodopis was a slave. Rhodopis was forced to work without pay and could not do what she liked. She had been born in Greece, but had been kidnapped by pirates. The pirates had sold the young girl to a rich Egyptian merchant. Rhodopis now worked as a servant in his house. Because Rhodopis was from another land, she did not look like the other servants or her master. Whereas they had dark hair and dark eyes, she had golden curls and green eyes. No amount of brushing would straighten those curls. The other servants teased Rhodopis. They also made her work even harder than they did. She had to get up before the sun rose and she had to work while the stars twinkled in the night sky. She cleaned her master's house, she baked bread, she washed her master's clothes, she sewed, and she even tended to the garden. Rhodopis lived a lonely life. The other servants wanted nothing to do with her, and her master, though kind, spent his time either sleeping in the warm sunshine or conducting business. Over time, the animals became her friends. Rhodopis chatted with the birds that nested in the lemon and lime trees that she tended. She told her troubles to the great white egrets, and she teased the red-tailed dragonflies. Okay, look at that picture. Which of the girls do you think is Rhodopis? This one, right? Because this is the only one that looks different, and because she's got the blonde hair, like it told us, and it's curly, like it told us, and she's got the green eyes, okay? However, her best friend in the whole world was a hippopotamus. A hippopotamus is a large animal with an extremely large head and mouth, and it spends most of its time in the water. They're often known as hippos. Whenever she went to the Nile River to wash her master's clothes, one particular hippo would come to the edge of the river. It would wallow in the water near her and keep her company while she worked. The hippo would look at her with its big round eyes. Its ears would flicker whenever she spoke. Sometimes they would play together. Rhodopis would splash water in the hippo's direction, and the hippo would sink down under the water and then reappear close by. One day, while picking lemons from the lemon trees in the garden, Rhodopis heard music coming from her master's house. She placed her basket on the ground and began to dance to the music. She moved gracefully like a ballerina. Rhodopis danced in the warm sunshine. As she danced, her master woke up from a long nap. As he stretched and yawned, he looked around the garden. He spotted Rhodopis dancing to the music. Rhodopis moved so elegantly. Her master thought to himself that someone who danced like a butterfly as Rhodopis did deserved elegant shoes to adorn her bare feet. The next day, he went to his own shoemaker and asked him to make a pair of red silk dancing slippers. The soles of the slippers were to be made of the finest leather. Several days later, the shoes arrived and Rhodopis's master presented them to her as a gift. Rhodopis was speechless. Rhodopis loved her slippers. The other servants were jealous that she had been given such an exquisite gift. They treated her even more horribly than before. This made Rhodopis very sad. Whenever she could, she would cautiously sneak off to the garden, put her red slippers on, and dance. Remember, cautiously means carefully or staying away from danger or risk. Why did Rhodopis have to cautiously sneak off to dance? Why do you think she had to sneak off? Because the other servants were kind of, they were jealous, right? And they treated her worse now that she got nice things. 
Quite often she danced at night beneath the sparkling stars when everyone else was asleep. All right, so, so far, which characters have we met? We've met the master, Rodopis, and then the other servants, right? What gift does Rodopis receive? What gift does she get? Red silk slippers, right? And how do the other servants treat Rodopis after she gets this gift? They treat her even worse than they were treating her before, right? That's kind of sad. One day, Rodopis's master was informed that the pharaoh, Amasis, had decided to hold a grand banquet at his royal palace in Memphis. All of his subjects were invited, even the servants. The pharaoh was the leader of uh, the leader of ancient Egypt, kind of like a king, okay? So the pharaoh had servants to do things for him just like a king would, and a banquet is a party with a fancy dinner. So kind of like a ball, but it has dinner. Rodopis was so excited. However, she quickly learned that the other servants had no intention of letting her go. So the other servants didn't want to let Rodopis go to the banquet, okay? Instead, they gave her piles of laundry to do and warned her that it better all be done by the time they returned. As the servants prepared to depart, Rodopis carried the huge pile of laundry down to the river. Rodopis worked for several hours washing and scrubbing the clothes. Her faithful friend, the hippo, kept her company. The hippo always cheered up Rodopis, and so after a while, Rodopis' spirits were revived, and she suddenly, or and she began to play with the hippo. The word revived means refreshed, okay? Remember, Rodopis is now feeling much better. As Rodopis cheerfully splashed the hippo, it suddenly moved to duck down between, down beneath the water. Here, the word duck means that the hippo lowered its head quickly to avoid being splashed, not like a duck that goes quack, quack. Then it reappeared quite suddenly right beside Rodopis. As the hippo lifted its large head, it created a wave of water that cascaded down upon Rodopis. She was drenched. So, too, were her beautiful slippers. Rodopis sighed and scratched the hippo's head. Then she took off her slippers and placed them on a rock to dry. After that, she continued with her work. She did not even stop to eat. After a long while, Rodopis finished washing all the clothes. By now, her back and arms were aching, but she was happy to be done. Just as she was about to put on her red slippers, she heard the flapping of wings. In an instant, one of her slippers was gone. From out of the darkening sky, a falcon had swooped down and stolen it. A falcon is a type of bird that can fly very fast, okay? Rodopis gasped out loud. She was certain that the falcon was actually the god of Horus. Horus is the sky god in the ancient, ancient Egyptian religion. It was a sign of something, but of what she did not know. There was nothing Rodopis could do. She put on her she put her one remaining slipper in her pocket and her return and returned to her master's house in her bare feet. Meanwhile, at the royal palace, an enormous crowd had gathered. The crowd was enjoying the festivities. Pharaoh Amasis looked on from his raised throne in the banquet hall. Although he was happy to see his subjects enjoying themselves, he preferred to go hunting. Preferred, okay? So Amasis liked hunting more than he liked parties. As Amasis did not have a wife or children, he spent most of his spare time hunting with his friends. As the day wore on, Amasis grew restless. He was just about to sneak away from the banquet when a great falcon swooped. Whoosh, Okay, down and dropped a small red slipper at his feet. Amasis picked up the small slipper and stared at it. He was certain that the god Horus had sent him a message. Amasis thought for a while. Then he summoned his advisors. He had decided that the god Horus was telling him that the owner of the red slipper should be his wife. The banquet 
The banquet was halted, and an announcement was made that the pharaoh himself would search the land for the owner of the red slipper. The guests slowly began to leave. So, what part of Cinderella does this remind you of? Huh? Maybe when the prince sent all his men out to find the owner of the glass slipper left behind at the ball? Now Rodopis's master had already left the palace. He had gone off to take care of some business, and so he did not hear the announcement. His servants, however, had. Together they decided that they would not breathe a word to Rodopis. As the weeks went by, the pharaoh scoured the land for his future wife. He searched by land and by water, but he was unsuccessful. At last, his search brought him by a royal barge to a region in the northern part of his kingdom. Rodopis was washing clothes in the river as the royal barge appeared in the distance. The other servants saw it too and knew immediately what it meant. As the barge neared the bank of the river, the royal trumpeters sounded the pharaoh's arrival. Immediately, the servants ordered Rodopis to hide herself in the reeds as she was, as they told her, too lowly a servant to be in the presence of the pharaoh. So the other servants are telling Rodopis that she's not important enough to meet the pharaoh, so she has to hide. But is that really why they're hiding her? With the red slipper in one hand, Amasa stepped off the royal barge. Upon seeing the slipper, the female servants elbowed each other out of the way, all wanting to be the first one to try it on. As this was happening, Rodopis peeked out from the reeds. She wanted to see the pharaoh's face. As she peeked out, Amasa spotted her. He stared at the beautiful girl for several moments, and Rodopis's heart skipped a beat. Amasis asked Rodopis to step forward, and then he placed her tiny foot inside the red slipper. As he did so, it was clear to all that she was the owner of the slipper. The other servants were horrified that she would be the pharaoh's queen, but the master gave his blessing. Together, Amasis and Rodopis sailed away on the royal barge with its purple sails fluttering in the gentle breeze that blew across the Nile River. Behind the barge swam Rodopis's best friend and honored wedding guest. Who do you think it is? The hippopotamus! All right, guys, that is the end of that story. Um, we're about to start our comprehension questions and word work. So if you need to get up and get a little wiggle break in or get a snack, go ahead and do that and then come right back to me, okay? All right. How was Rodopis treated by other servants? She was treated poorly by the other servants, right? They made fun of her and they make her do more than her share of the work. How is the way Rodopis is treated by the other servants similar to the way that Cinderella is treated by her stepsisters? Both Cinderella and Rodopis are treated unfairly and made to do more than their share of work, right? What must Rodopis do while the others attend the Pharaoh's banquet? The other servants make Rodopis do piles of laundry so she can't go to the banquet, right? What animal takes Rodopis's slipper? A falcon. Where does that animal take the slipper? The falcon takes the slipper to the pharaoh's banquet. How does the pharaoh realize that Rodopis is the owner of the red slipper? The pharaoh searches the land and has every woman try on the slipper, and at last Rodopis tries on the slipper and it fits, right? What are some similarities between Cinderella and the girl with the red slippers? So in both stories, the main characters are kind and good, but they're treated poorly by the people around them. And also, in both stories, there are fancy parties where the main characters are excluded, meaning they're not able to go at first for Cinderella. And then both characters are also identified or found by slippers that fit their feet, right? Now, what were some differences between the two stories? Cinderella is treated poorly by her stepmother and stepsisters, while Rodopis is treated unfairly by the other servants. 
Cinderella marries a prince, while Rhodopis marries a pharaoh. Cinderella has a glass slipper, while Rhodopis had red silk slippers with leather, with leather, leather soles, right? And there are a whole bunch more, too, I'm sure. So which of the fairy tales did you like better? Interesting. All right, let's do our word work. In the read aloud you heard, whenever she could, Rhodopis would cautiously sneak off into the garden, put on her red slippers, and dance. I want you to say the word cautiously with me. Cautiously. Cautiously means carefully or staying away from danger or risk. Harry and his sisters cautiously crossed the street, carefully looking both ways for oncoming traffic. Can you remember a time when you did something cautiously? Try to use the word cautiously when you tell about it. What's the word we've been talking about? Cautiously. I'm going to read several sentences. If you think any of these things should be done cautiously, say, you should do that cautiously. If you don't think any of these things should be done cautiously, I want you to say, you don't need to do that cautiously. All right, here we go, ready? And I also want you to stand up if you need to be cautious with it, and I'll just sit down if you don't need to be. Pouring milk from a full carton into a glass. You should be cautious with that, right? You should do that cautiously. Tying your shoe. You don't need to do that cautiously. Crossing the street. You should do that cautiously, right? To be safe. Walking by a pool. You should do that cautiously because you don't want to fall in. Reading your book. You don't have to do that cautiously. Okay, let's see. What else do we have here? Okie dokie. I think... Let's see, we identified characters, setting, and events in a fairy tale. We talked about the similarities and differences in our two fairy tales. We were able to use the word cautiously. You're going to illustrate and describe an event from a fairy tale in just a moment. And you're also going to do your quick um, exit ticket where you'll identify whether something happened in the beginning, middle, or end. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.